Wow. What's going on, Warriors? We here. Marvel Age of Ultron. We're going to go into this film and talk about it in depth. No spoilers. No spoilers. We're just going to go in and talk about the film. It's going to be a very, very hard review to do because I'm not going to do any spoilers or anything like that. Talk about any kind of particular details. Anything that I refer to has been seen in the trailers and stuff like that. So, with that said, not wasting any time. Mind explosion. Let's go. So, let's address three issues I had with the film. Main issues. Because there were one or two. Three, four, five or six. But we're going to address the three big ones. Number one. Ultron. He was not menacing, intimidating, overwhelming or powerful that Ultron should be. Even though I feel they went from generation one through to five. And it was generation five that he actually decided to take on the Avengers in the war of the Avengers. He did have an adamantium body in the comic books. That was when he became all powerful after he got defeated in the war with the Avengers. In this film, he had a Vibrillion body. Now I think because of the 20th Century Fox thing that's going on between Marvel and Disney or whatever, they can't use the term mutants or adamantium. So they've replaced adamantium with Vibrillion. If that is the fact, then that means he got to generation six. Even he got to Generation 6, but there was no way that was Generation 6 Ultron because he was not powerful. He was not godlike like Ultron is, like I know Ultron should be. He was free to Iron Man. He had a fight with Iron Man and the fight was godlike. But let me tell you something, okay? Iron Man versus Ultron, 10-0. That's a 10-0 matchup when you look at the film. Now, you do believe it because Iron Man has to be super godlike to fight against Thanos and what's coming in the future. We've got Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange. We've got all these characters coming out, future. So we've got to have these characters on the level of those characters. And you saw why Captain America was so godlike in Captain America 2. Because he's got to deal with these people, with like Ultron and Thanos in the future. That being said, the Ultron and Ultron clones were Pringles. That basically means free. They were free. And free means easy. I could not believe it. You saw Clint. Hawkeye. He was dismantling Ultron clones like they were nothing. Just as easily as you switch a light switch on and off was how easily he was disposing of the Ultron clones. Scarlet Witch was godlike by the way. Pietro. They were godlike. I'm not taking anything away from them. But she was destroying them like that. Like she literally click her fingers or blink at them and they'll be destroyed. Everyone was destroying them. Black Widow. She was dismantled. She fought like three or four of them at one go and she just bust them up. They were just flaking. Like you know the way Iron Man in Iron Man 3 how his suits were like literally like plastic shells that were just getting dismantled at the drop of a hat that's how these clones were it seemed like there was no consequence for any type of atrocity or destruction on a mass level there was an incredible amount of destruction people got killed buildings and areas got destroyed there was no consequence there was nothing like the whole went on a rampage nobody got punished for it it was like almost like after it happened they talked about it for like two minutes and then it got forgotten about ultron is supposed to be like some super god-like computer that could control the internet artificial intelligence yet he still couldn't even see when the avengers were on the internet when they were interacting with their other technical locations in various areas also should have been able to see that and intercept them no that didn't happen you know so there were a little bit of things like even the wanda and pietro who were two of the most incredible characters that could come into a, a film of this magnitude and have such an impact but the impact wasn't because of their abilities it was the, because of their presence the characters were so good man quicksilver that character was brilliant his abilities the way they displayed his powers was so sick it wasn't goofy or stupidly done like it was in the x-men film and that, don't get me wrong the x-men film the display of cow was really cool but it was cheesy it didn't really appeal to me in this film it was beautiful it was grounded in reality yet it was still fantastic enough for you to be like that is fucking sick man you know scarlet witch what an awesome character she looks like one at the beginning of the film as she becomes scarlet witch by the end of the film you see the complete avengers in the end of 
version of the film, like the proper Avengers, like the new generation of the Avengers. One time Pietro, legitimate hatred for a character which drove them to be with Ultron in the first place to work with him. You know, it's kind of technically her doing that Ultron became in the film, even though he was going to become in this film anywhere. Tony Stark became more driven because of Wanda, what she did to him. It disappeared. The hatred for that character disappeared in an instant. Once a couple facts got put in there in front of them, that there was no hatred anymore. So there was some type of breaking, film breaking, story holes. But it didn't stop the film from being so good because the film, what the film had that was good, was so good that it distracted you from those story breaking elements of the film. The film was so good man, you were just distracted by the, um, being amazed by the characters, the versatility of every single scenario situation. You were never left thinking, what is happening again? Everything was explained to you properly. You were never lost, you were never confused. You knew who everybody was, even though they introduced a lot of characters. Iron Man was particularly solid in this film. The Iron Legion was in this film, and the Iron Legion was sick. I couldn't believe when I saw um, the way Tony Stark was, an Iron Man suit, and the Iron Legion, I just kept thinking to myself, as good luck as this is, why didn't this appear in Iron Man 3? Tony Stark, where were you in Iron Man 3? Where was this Tony Stark in Iron Man 3? Because he didn't show up. The version of Iron Man 3 that showed up was a pussy. Was a pussy that was having panic attacks because of what happened in the first Avengers film. Whereas in this film, he was... A bloody nutter in this film. He didn't give a fuck. He was focused. He's like, we got aliens. We got super beings from other planets that can destroy the planet at the drop of a hat and kill everybody if we're not careful. There's no time to be Pringles, people. There's no time to be free. There's no time to be shook. We have to take drastic action. If that means me creating the Ultron program, we should make a supercomputer at the risk of artificial intelligence that will rebel against us. Let's do this thing. I don't give a fuck. Captain America, you don't like it? Guess what? Kiss this. He was going on sick. I was like, yes, this is Tony Stark. And you saw a taste of the civil war that could happen because the Avengers did have a fight against each other within this film and sides were taken and you could clearly see who would join Captain America and who would join Iron Man. It was so fascinating how they did the film. I was like, yes, this is my film. This is my shit. I loved it. The pacing was fantastic. The story was godlike. They had Ultron, but he wasn't like an over super powerful um, megalomaniac computer that wanted to destroy the world, even though he was a super megalomaniac computer that was trying to destroy the world. He wasn't doing it in such a blatant way like, I'm going to kill everybody, I am a robot, destroy everybody. No, he didn't sound like that. He sounded, sounded like a Dalek from Doctor Who, I'm sorry. But he didn't seem like that. He seemed like a philosopher. That character was interesting because of his philosophical ways. Whenever Ultron spoke, you were interested. You were engrossed by what he had to say. But that was a problem in the film because other than his philosophy and when he spoke, he really wasn't anything powerful. He was like a, a antagonist that hid in the shadows that appeared... Once you destroyed him, he'd just come back in another, but download his consciousness into another body and come back at you again. What was another interesting thing in this film was you had Helen Cho in this film. The mother of the mastermind, Excello. Excello, he's um, Amadeus Cho, and he's basically, um, he's the seventh smartest human in the entire world. He is in the Illuminati. His mum was in this film, and the vision was sick. The vision was godlike. You know, you had um, Ulysses Claw. Ulysses Claw was really good in this film. Like, he was, he was a militant motherfucker as well. You know what I mean? But he's got his arm blasted off by Ultron. Ultron ripped his arm off because he tried to get disrespectful to Ultron. Ultron was like, shut up, man. You know what I'm saying, innit? But what was crazy about it was he's supposed to get his arm blasted off by T'Challa. So they're skipping that in the Black Panther movie. Whatever, we understand it. But that was another thing that was good in this film, was every single character had their time to shine. You understood who they were, why they were fighting, what they had to lose, what they had to gain, and what they were fighting for. Banner, Black Widow, Clint. Clint was a lot of focus on Clint that I didn't expect, 
but it was welcomed. But if the same character was good, you could not pick a character you said, oh, I love this character. Thor was great. Captain America was great. The vision was absolutely blindingly fantastic. Like, the vision, unbelievable. Yeah, the film was beautiful. I would literally give this film a 10 out of 10. So that was my review. Um, if anything you've got to say, please comment below and listen to what you guys have got to say. And let's do this thing. Okay, Warriors, thanks for watching. Um, love you guys and let's keep going strong, man. Okay, take it easy.